you're not going to be able to get full coverage put back on the road, it's going to be worth less. Are you considering buying a salvage vehicle? Before you make that decision, there are some critical things you need to know. Buying a salvage vehicle can be a risky investment. Make sure you do your due diligence and fully understand the potential risk involved. Some insurance companies won't even insure a salvage title vehicle. You're going to take and fix it, most likely, unless you're going to dismantle it, sell it for parts. That might have been the better idea to do with this one. Insurance companies will insure a previously salvaged vehicle, but you're probably not going to be able to get full coverage on it. So just comprehensive or whatever, big words. If you're wanting to resell the vehicle, if you want to make sure the next person can register and insure the vehicle, might want to have them check with their insurance company. It saves a lot of headache for you and the potential buyer when you go to get the title switched to your name anyways and just have them do an inspection on it. I always take my vehicles in when I get the title switched and I have them do an inspection. It's here and it's not hard at all. They literally just check the mileage and the VIN numbers. It's not like they check the blinkers that the headlights are working. I don't think you want the airbags deployed when, when they're checking it. They, they frown upon that as I found out. They still let me title it. They still put it as a previously salvaged title. I'd recommend not taking it there with the airbags deployed though. I mean, if your door's still bashed in a little bit, I don't even seem to care about that. As a matter of fact, I had a truck. The light's going to drive me nuts. If you're going to go out, just go out already. That had the driver's door bashed in. Wasn't even really too bad. So I replaced the door and I thought, oh, I'll probably take this down there and get the title switched over. And didn't think nothing about the VIN number being on that door. So the door that I put on it was from a different truck. And, and they said, you changed that door? I'm like, well, yeah, it's a Silverado. And that one says Sierra. You big dummy. They want you to get like a plate that shows that that VIN number for that door is registered now that that truck's VIN number. And it's, it's a whole process. It's, I ended up going back and putting the old door back on, taking it back to the DMV and had them inspect it with the old door on it so I could avoid all that mess. And what a nightmare that was. Wasted pretty much a whole day on that for nothing. I'm working on getting this bumper back together so I can get it installed on the car. I already got this crash bar put on here and it's crash absorber, some little plastic piece. And that was one of the things I had to do to get this car finished here. If you watch some of the previous videos on this, you can see how we've came to this point. We replaced the hood, painted the hood, Fixed the fender a little bit, blended into the fenders, and repainted pretty much the front end. We had to fix the bumper. There was some cracks in that. Fixed that with some plastic welding and repainted the bumper here too. I also got some different wheels on it, brand new tires. So all that's left is really getting this inside of the bumper put back together. I was waiting on a chrome piece for the grill, got that in, so that's completed. Then I just had to go through and, and hook up all the wires and everything to all the fog lights and whatever these LED lights are. I, I, don't, I think they're driving lights. I don't know. Now there's some parking sensors that go in the front here, and I'm missing one of them and two brackets that I didn't know I was going to need. So I'll probably be back into this bumper again yet. But this is pretty much all done here. So now it's all left is get it clipped back in and screwed back in. Something else I wish I would have paid attention to before I purchased this previously salvaged vehicle was the fact that the prices for the parts are not exactly cheap at all. Knowing what I know now, I would have probably done more research on how much some of the stuff I could see before I even tried to make a purchase on this vehicle, how much the parts were going to be. And if you're really interested in that vehicle, and let's say you're willing to pay up to a certain amount for it, try to include the parts that you know, or the labor, or whatever's going to happen or need to happen before that vehicle is able to be put back on the road. So if you know that you need a bumper for it, you know, try to price one of them out. You can find used ones, figure out what painting is going to cost. If you're not going to be able to paint it yourself, a lot of that stuff can make or break the deal on a previously salvaged vehicle. So if you buy it from the auction and let's say you get it for $10,000 cheaper than what you could buy one for, that sounds really good and tempting. But if you have to put seven grand even into it to get it back on the road and looking like it did before the crash, what what did you save yourself? You saved yourself three grand and you have a previously salvaged vehicle. The third thing here too to keep in mind when purchasing a previously salvaged vehicle, there we go, oh, kind of is that the resale value on a vehicle that's been previously salvaged is less than one that's not. So if you had two identical Chevy SS's, let's say both at 90,000 miles, let's just say. The one that's been previously salvaged is going to be cheaper. I mean, maybe the person didn't post it cheaper, but it's fine. So if you buy a vehicle and you're saving yourself three grand on it, well, that's good. You saved yourself money. But if you ever want to resell that vehicle, you're not saving yourself any money there. You're, you're going to end up selling it for 
Probably less than what you got in it. It's fighting back. I picked up a 2007 Chevy Corvette, so a C6. And yeah, it looked like it was in pretty bad shape. But I got it really cheap. I thought, you know, the engine alone was probably worth what I paid for it, honestly. I think it only had like 63,000 miles on it. It was just the uh, LS2. It was a 6.0. It ran good. I didn't know that when I got it. It actually was listed as non-running drive. I really took a gamble there. Some of my wiser decisions. But I ended up putting so much money into that car that it wasn't... It wasn't worth it. It was a fun car. I had a good time with it. I guess that's worth something. I spent a lot of money on that vehicle. And I think I lost probably four or $5,000 on that vehicle once I sold it because I learned two lessons with that. And those two lessons were that one, nobody wants salvage title Corvette and nobody wants a high mileage event, which it wasn't high mileage, but it was salvage title. Trying to resell that. That's, that's the kind of the things I learned there. there. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Wiring all hooked back up in the front so the fog lights and whatever these LED things will work. All the sensors are put back in except for the two that go here. Finish putting the bolts back in and then I'm going to have to uh, deal with the airbag stuff. The SRS restraint system, you know, it's, well, it's not happy. Got airbag light on, so I have to deal with that. We got steering positioning sensor, the steering wheel, the steer, I don't know, a positioning sensor for the steering wheel. Uh, it has to be recalibrated because... I don't know exactly, to be honest with you. The vehicle was hit, you know, right here. And for some reason, the alignment's off. So I'm thinking because it had different wheels on it when I, when I got it, it had some Pontiac G8 wheels on it that didn't fit. I'm thinking that whatever wheels were on it probably would have told a story. And I bet you one of them was bent. I think what they did was probably did a... ...into a tree. It probably messed up the alignment on this side a little bit, which... Cause the wheel to be a little cockeyed. Cockeyed? One of those things. And that just freaks the system out. You know, all the systems with the electronic and the computers. And that caused the stability track control light thing to come on and the message displayed. The problem with that is, is that then you, well, you can't do anything fun. You can't do the uh, turning off the traction control. How do you get that taken care of? Now, I don't have an alignment machine. I, I kind of can eyeball them and get them pretty good, but can't really tell. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks. Get an alignment, you know? Then I know my brand new tires aren't going to get ruined quick. All pretty much put back together. Missing just a couple things. Just never ends. Always something on a car to fix. You can fix it once and move on. Or you can keep it and fix it over and over. Either way, you're going to be fixing it. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, it looks pretty good though. That crumb's a little dull. I have to clean that up. This is just a cleaner stuff you can use for... Chrome. Yeah, I'll grab the box here and show you what it is. You got chrome wheels or polished wheels even. It's not very abrasive. It's just kind of like like wool. And it has some good smelling wax. It doesn't taste like cotton candy. It feels like cotton candy. It smells like a hint of soap with vanilla. Uh, polish infused cotton candy. No, no, that's not it. Polish infused cotton. Shines all metals. Fast cutting, high gloss protection. Not taste test. So this is Wizard's uh, metal polish. It looks more like the other side. So if you're going to buy yourself a previously salvaged vehicle, do a little bit of research first. I've done several, several vehicles and came out on top just fine. And several of those vehicles I've been able to turn a profit on even. So it's not a complete loss. You just got to watch what you're doing. But if you made it this far into the video and you enjoyed any of the content, well, you know what to do. And also, if you're curious about this project here that I worked on, I do have a couple other videos. Go check those out. It's a beautiful sunny day out today. Don't even really need this jacket. I'm going to go enjoy my rebuilt car. <laughs>